Hi there, I'm Michael Giblin with FiddlerShop.com and welcome to another edition of Michael Explains It All or some of it and causes more problems and you'll have more questions at the end of this is maybe what it should actually be called. But today we're talking about Tomastic Infeld precision violin strings. Um, I can't say the German German word precision. It always sounds French when I say it. First of all, the umlaut. Eh, eh, pre, precision, precision, precision. We will ask the questions. You will play the precision violin strings. It just it still sounds French every time. So I'm not really gonna say it a whole lot. I'm just gonna call them precision, and that's probably what you should call them too if you're referring to them. I'll try to make a short version of this and then elaborate, or I'll have to give myself, I'm gonna give myself license to ramble because I read your comments. I know that I ramble. So basically the short, short of it is, these are our steel core strings. So they're very powerful, very brilliant, and they have good tuning stability. That's kind of the advantage of steel core strings. I'd say if you have sort of a, maybe a duller violin and you need to liven it up and you need to inject some life into it, check these out. I think they will really brighten up uh, a violin that needs just a little bit more, a little more of this. You know, if people are like, we can't hear you. Could you put on some steel core strings so we could hear you? Um, check them out. Similar to a dominant, I would say. I mean, they are still made by the same company after all. Um, just possibly a little bit more punch, I think, than, than dominance. A little bit more at ya, coming at ya. And, um, but not exactly the same you know, depth and warmth and richness, maybe as a dominant. They're just a little bit, a little bit more spirit fingers. All right, that's the short of it. If you want to stop watching, that's a pretty good video right there. I'd say that's, I put in a good solid like two minutes maybe, you know? I should I should just call it now. But, you know, I, I'll understand if you want to check out. You can, there's a link up here. You could buy the strings if you want or, or you could just keep watching this and see what happens. I'm going to play some, I'm going to play them for you. You'll see some beautiful colors on the screen. I don't know why I had to say the beautiful colors on the screen, but they are. Um, so th that's what I'm going to do for you. Everybody else, thanks thanks for sticking around. I, I enjoy having you with me on my journey. To see, these are all the strings that I'm playing on the Fiddlerman Artist Violin and the Holstein Two Star Bow. All the links for this, again, are in the description box below. But, you know, I had never played precision, pre precision uh, strings before this, so uh, one of the perks of the job is I get to educate myself about all these strings and see what they're really like instead of just reading these little descriptions that say they're powerful and bright. So here's what I'm gonna do. Here's some open strings. Okay, so these have grown on me uh, a bit. At first, when I first put them on, they sound like a steel core string. They just sound, they sound very 
metallic -y. I mean, all strings are going to mellow out a little bit. And these have mellowed out enough. I, I would like to see them mellow out more. Um, but some of that, they just have that steel core string. What, so the, what the, a lot of that means is like, there's not the same amount of elasticity, which on, in a good way is, is, is good because they don't, they're not gonna go out of tune as easily. So they're generally a little bit more recommended for beginners, maybe for fiddle players might like them because if you're gonna be playing fiddle, you probably have an amplifier anyways. Maybe you like that really bright sound anyways. Um, you know, for more of a soloist kind of a, um, you know, a, if you're giving a recital, you want it's just a little bit more warmth, a little bit more depth. Maybe not, maybe not going to be your choice. But uh, steel core strings, getting back to that, is is kind of has a little bit more of that metallic-y sound to it. Um, they're and I've probably said this enough times already. They're going to have they had do have a little bit more projection, a little bit more sound to them in general than a synthetic core or a gut string for that matter. Um, so let's talk materials for a second. There are um, a few options and a few different tensions that these come in also. I don't really get carried away too much with materials. I'm just not a materialistic kind of guy. <laughs> all right, sorry, dad joke there. Um, so these are all chrome wound. They do have some other options. I wrote down some of my options for my notes. So the E, is the uh, that I have playing that I'm playing on is the chrome steel E. There is also a steel core one. I don't know, not the one get too worked up about that. Uh, the chrome wound A is what this one is. There is also an aluminum one, aluminum aluminum wound A, aluminum linoleum. Um, some people might think that that is brighter, but some people also have completely conflicting ideas about aluminum versus silver. Um, anyways, that's a whole nother topic. The, the D is the chrome wound, and also the G is the chrome wound, and that's kind of what the standard set is. The um, I guess this is the set number 58. Again, that's a whole big mess. I don't really get too worked up about... Um, about sets, especially if you're trying new sets out. If you're like a dedicated precision user, maybe you'll notice, you know, you can experiment and, and play with a chrome wound G versus the silver wound G and, and let us know in the comments that you think the silver really is warmer. A lot of people generally think that silver wound strings are warmer and aluminum are warmer. However, Pierre and I have different opinions about this. He thinks that uh, silver are brighter. Sen and I really haven't experimented enough with the same string in different windings to really be able to, to say one way or the other. So, I'm not the uh, all-knowing Michael explains at all. Anyways, I don't really get too bent out of shape about materials. I'm just letting you know that there are a couple different options. Um, but so much difference can be made in how you play your violin. That a set, initially, I really thought that these were just like too, too bright, too, too smacking. Like really, it, they respond amazing. Like they're right, they're right there. To me, I just don't, a little bit of that, that open G sound, a little bit of that open G sound, is just, for me, it's just, it's, it's a little too in your face, a little too, a little bit too much of a smack, and I'd like to have it be just a little bit more reserved, a little bit, I mean, I like power, don't get me wrong, but there's a difference between like this kind of power and like, I don't know, that kind of power where it's just But you can also do so much with just how you play your instrument. So that's why I don't think that equipment and materials make that big of a difference compared to the difference that you can make as a player. 
You know, that, oh, amazing how that has that uh, such a different kind of warmth to it. You know, you can really press and to the point where the sound collapses. Yeah, you don't want to do that much. But you can also soften it up and so that, I don't know, tone and stuff, this is it's just such a mystery and stuff. Obviously, you want to find a sound that speaks to you, that matches your instrument. And this is kind of what all this whole Michael Explains It All is all about, is exploring sound and, and what it, and what kind of, and what, sound we think of, of as a violinist that we want to hear. I mean, it's great to have that kind of ability to just soar and project effortlessly. And so, uh, I really, at first, they, they really have grown on me a lot. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of them at first, but they, you know, are a really nice set of strings. And for about $44, I believe, at the time of filming, uh, $44 is a very nice set of strings. These are, these are cheaper than dominance, actually, because a lot of these uh, Tomastic prices just went up even as, as I've, even as when I film this. So uh, right now I believe these are cheaper than dominant. So, but again, don't kill me in the comments if, if that's not the case uh, when you're reading this now. So just a word about what we saw on the graph there. This was the harmonic series that we were seeing. You're seeing all the frequencies when we play just one note. You think you're just playing one note, but you're really hearing all these overtones uh, the bottom, this kind of fundamental pitch is A440. And then above that is an octave that's 880, if we're just talking about the A string. And it goes up and up, there's all these overtones. And so it's really fascinating, just I think I include this information just so you can see something and just kind of expand your understanding of how we perceive tone. I'll also pull over, just for a quick comparison, the Varkal Ambers, which are similarly priced, and those ones are gonna be a little bit more expensive. And also the Daddario Ascente, which were filmed in the same room. Some of the other strings I did film in a different studio. So I'll try to be as fair as possible in showing you the strings that I recorded in the same room so you can hear the difference. <laughs> So I will, of course, someday do a complete back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back video with all the strings that I'm comparing, but I hope that was helpful at least to hear them next to those two strings. And, you know, for my own opinion, I think they have a great projection, would be great for sort of a softer instrument that needs a little bit more uh, oomph to it. They do lack warmth a little bit, you know, compared to like a dominant. Um, but they are, of course, cheaper than dominant. So they're, they're sort of a nice middle of the road, a little bit nicer than like Ascente or like Preludes. But, you know, we're not exactly at the same, we're not keeping up with, you know, the Eva Parazzi's or the Varco Ambers or, um, you know, the, the, the much more expensive strings. They're, they're sort of, you know, uh, a little bit, a little, I think they deliver more than what they are priced at. So I think they're, they're, they're a great purchase. I don't think you'll regret buying them. Um, it all, of course, though, 
It depends on what you need on your violin and what you expect to get from, you know, from from the sound of your instrument. So let me know, of course, in the comments if you have tried precision strings, precision strings, and what you were using before, what you liked or didn't like, and maybe what you switched to so we can all maybe learn together. Well, of course, you can find links to this somewhere up here to buy on fiddlershop.com. We'd also love it if you subscribe to our channel so you can you can keep in touch and you can have more, more fun days like this. Well, I appreciate you watching this. Hope to see you at fiddlershop.com.